Well, now we're up to the first hit for the group Matchbox 20, a band whose debut album was titled Woodshed Diaries. Hundreds of promotional copies with that title had been shipped, and then they changed their minds. It was just a few months ago that the Orlando, Florida band Matchbox 20 had finished recording their debut album in Hollywood. The album titled Woodshed Diaries was in the can. It was done. In fact, the record company had already shipped out hundreds of promotional copies. And then the band members went to a hot Hollywood club called Cafe Largo to check out a band called The Wild Colonials. One of the opening acts was an unknown musician who got up to sing a few songs. And she introduced one of them with the words, This is for you or someone like you. Well, according to singer Rob Thomas, quote, we freaked. That was exactly how we wanted our record to be. That's how we looked at it, hoping there was something for everyone. That just said it perfectly, unquote. So perfectly that the next day, they told their record company they had to change their album's title. Rob Thomas says it didn't make the people at his record company very happy, but they agreed. And so Woodshed Diaries became yourself or someone like you. Well, this week, the first hit from that CD becomes the brand new number one on the alternative rock chart. And here on the pop chart, it leaps seven big notches to number 33. American Top 20. Hi, this is Casey Kasem. Orlando, Florida's Matchbox 20 is red hot. They've been sizzling in the number one spot for eight consecutive weeks with their smash 3 a.m. Now can they blaze at number one for a ninth week in a row? We'll find out as we count down all the hottest hits in the USA on American Top 20 from AMFM Radio Networks. We're playing the hottest hits of 1999. Question, how do you follow up a debut album that has sold over 10 million copies? Well, you take a break. At least that's the strategy of Matchbox 20. Rob Thomas says with four top ten hits, the band was in danger of overexposure. So they pulled the plug, or at least hit the pause button. Rob says it sounds pretty hokey, but it's up to you to give the people a break. Unquote. Here's one of the songs that helped turn Rob Thomas and Matchbox 20 into superstars. Coming in at number 21 for the year, Back to Good. These are the biggest hits by the hottest stars. Well, now we're up to a hit by Matchbox 20, a band whose leader spent several years just traveling around. He says it was those years on the road that helped turn him into a musician. In the past, we've described how singer and songwriter Rob Thomas spent a lot of time on the road, something he did to get away from problems he was having at home. He says that sometimes he was able to thumb a ride without too much trouble, but other times... He was stuck in the middle of nowhere. That could have been bad. But for Rob, it was time he used to learn about the music he could make. He says, I'd spend a lot of time sitting on an off-ramp. You can just sit there and no one is around you. You can scream. You can sing. You can do whatever you want. And what Rob wanted to do was make music. He says, I had a little keyboard with me in my backpack. I'd pull it out and sit there and work on some tunes, which was the beginning of the career that led to a string of hit songs, including the hit that survey song number seven this week on AT40. Here's Rob Thomas and Matchbox 20 with If You're Gone. Well, now we're up to an American Top 40 Extra by Matchbox 20. Leader Rob Thomas says he has spent hundreds of hours listening to one particular album for inspiration, the number one album of the year 1977. Rob says for him, when it comes to great albums, one group set the musical bar pretty high, the band Fleetwood Mac. Rob says, quote, anytime I want to achieve something, anytime I'm recording a new album, the bar I set is the Rumors album by Fleetwood Mac. It's a reminder of how high I have to aim. Rob says he first heard songs from the album when he was a young boy. He says he remembers sitting in his mother's car, driving to visit his grandmother, and listening to songs like Go Your Own Way on the radio. 
He says, when he started buying albums, he picked up a copy of Rumors, and quote, I couldn't believe that Go Your Own Way, Dreams, Don't Stop, and You Make Love and Fun all came from the same album. That album became a metaphor for quality in my life and my music. Quality that Rob Thomas has tried to maintain in his own band. With an American Top 40 Extra, here's Matchbox 20 and a number one smash from 2000, Bent. <laughs> Well, now we're up to the hit, Unwell. It's by a band whose lead singer was helped out by a concerned teacher when he was a down-and-out 15-year-old. Ten years later, he repaid that teacher. It was 11 years ago that singer Rob Thomas was living in Orlando, Florida. His family had fallen apart, and he was living with his grandmother at the time, and things weren't working out all that well between the two of them. Things were so bad, in fact that Rob decided he was going to hitchhike from Orlando to Columbia, South Carolina, where his mother was living, and he was going to drop out of school as well. Luckily, there was one person at the school in whom Rob could confide, the school's guidance counselor. Before Rob left, he called upon the man to thank him for his support and let him know that he was leaving. When the teacher heard that Rob was going to hitchhike all that distance, a dangerous move for a 15-year-old, he reached into his own pocket and gave Rob the $69 needed to buy a bus ticket. He knew he couldn't stop Rob from dropping out, but at least he could make his journey a safe one. Well, Rob never forgot that kindness, and a few years later, ten years after it happened, he repaid the money to the counselor. Rob says, quote, He wrote me a nice letter saying, I had restored his faith in people. He thought I was a lost cause that he'd never see again, unquote. Well, Rob did struggle for a few years, but with perseverance and hard work, he's now on top of the world. And this week, his latest hit moves up three notches to number 13 on AT40. Here's Unwell. This is Casey, coming to you from Hollywood. Well, now we're up to the song Lonely No More. It's by a man who describes himself as a pack rat. A pack rat with thousands of video games. Rob Thomas says, quote, It may be because for so long I had nothing. Now I just accumulate things. I go into my TV room and I have a stack of like 7,000 video games. Rob may be exaggerating a little bit, but at the urging of his wife Marisol, he's tried to get his video game habit under control by renting games instead of buying them. Quote, I use a video game rental company called Gamefly. It's the Netflix of video games. I can keep a game for a month and then send it back. It keeps the clutter of games under control, which is good, because my wife is not a video game person at all. End of quote. Well, video games isn't the only thing that Rob Thomas collects. He's also collecting hits, and this week one of his hits slips a notch to number 15. Here's Lonely No More. Casey's Coast to Coast. I'm Casey Kasem. We're up to the song at number four in our survey. It's by Rob Thomas. Rob says he loves sneakers as much as anyone, especially Adidas and Asics, but only if they're simple. Quote, I don't like flash. I don't like things all crazy. I don't want to pimp my tennis shoes, you know? At number four, here's Rob with This Is How a Heart Breaks. This is how a heart breaks. Rob Thomas, a star who writes his songs using an old acoustic guitar. He drops from number 9 to number 12 with This Is How a Heart Breaks. I'm Casey Kasem. Here's the star who stopped wearing leather pants on stage. Not for moral reasons, but as Rob Thomas says, quote, The dye started staining my legs, and you can't wash it off. My legs look like they had a weird disease. Now here's Rob Thomas at number 11 for a third week with Ever the Same. America's Top Hits. This week back in 1998, one of the top hits in the USA was 3 AM by a band who didn't want anyone to hear their early recordings. Yet this song is one of them. It was back in 1993 that three of the members of Matchbox 20 were in a band called Tabitha Secret. They recorded some songs, but they never released any of them. Instead, Tabitha's Secret broke up, and Matchbox 20 was formed. And the members of Matchbox 20 thought that the recordings they had made as Tabitha's Secret would remain secret. And then, after Matchbox 20 hit big, 
they were released by the other musicians who had been in Tabitha's secret. And it turns out that there was nothing to hide. In fact, a song originally recorded by Tabitha's secret became a smash for Matchbox 20, one of the top hits in the USA this week back in 1998. Here's 3 a.m. 